This program was made possible from the support of VSA Texas and Amerigroup. I'm Gene. And I'm Dave. And we're the Gene, Gene and, and Dave, Dave show. show. Dave, did we have a good time at South by Southwest this year? Oh my what? God, the energy it just um, increases every year. You know, have you ever put a piece of tin foil in the microwave? I, no, not recently, no. <laughs> well, I don't recommend it. Don't try it at home. Okay. But when you do, sparks fly everywhere. And well, that's as close as I can think of to being at South by Southwest. And you know, this South by, was a little bit different from previous years. This one, disability related uh, vendors, presenters, demonstrations, <laughs> were all over the place. It was everywhere. I mean, I think we started a trend or something. Because when yeah. we used to go to South by Southwest, there was like maybe one or two things. You know, mm -hmm. we could show up one day and see one thing and we'd covered all of the accessibility, disability related stuff mm -hmm. for the show. We'd go see one thing and walk around the roll around the trade show and we'd be done. But man, this this time, we actually had to split up. We did, <laughs> we did. And go to separate shows because there was so much to see, so much that we wanted to record that we would have to, you would go one way and I'd go the other. And uh, let's start off with designing for disability or redesigning for disability. <laughs> this has got to be one of my favorite um, events. Uh, I met this woman, uh, Kim, from California, uh, who has no arms. Uh, I was talking to her before the event. I didn't even know she was involved with it. But uh, I asked her if she knew what was going to happen there, and she said, oh yeah, it's, uh, it's about a make-a-thon. What they do is they get uh, people with disabilities together, and they get uh, re rehab specialists, engineers, um, woodworkers, metal workers, they get them all together for 72 hours and the person with a disability will say, this is what I need and then the other people have 72 hours to make it. And what's so great about it is it's like anything, you know, anything yeah. that you can think of. I think of stuff all the time that just would make my life easier, like if I'm in bed and I want to be able to open the blinds or maybe mm -hmm. even if, if I want to open a window Sometimes just little things like that are so hard to do if you're in a wheelchair. I mean, you, first of all, you've got to make sure that there's not stuff in front of your window so that you can get to it. Right. And then if you can, or you, do you have enough strength to reach up, unlock the window, and, and push it open, which for me is really hard to do. But something as simple as opening a window or opening a bag or just anything that you can think of, these people get together and say, what do you need? And you just say, I need this, and they sit around and conspire and figure out how to do it. This, this they is make awesome. It happen. And we've got a short clip here showing how this uh, make-a-thon went. You know, Dave, I was so impressed with this event, with these people, that I said, we've got to bring that to Austin. So just, you know, put me on the list. I'll do whatever it takes. We got to get people together. We got to make something happen. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, and it's doable, obviously, because mm -hmm. they're doing it 
in California. Why can't we do it here in Austin? And it really reminded me of you know the competitiveness and the competitions that we have. You know, it started out as Air Austin, mm -hmm. and now yeah. you know Nobility's Air. That what they do for website accessibility, we could do for stuff. Yeah, yeah. Making stuff. So I'm glad you're going to make it happen, Gene. I'll well, you're going to be with me there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> now, as, as we said earlier, this uh, this whole South by Southwest was really mainstreaming accessibility. We went to one event, um, talk about mainstreaming, and um, you know, we, you and I have friends that are uh, blind or visually impaired, and they go to a movie, they, they can't see what's going on. Mm -hmm. But our friends over at Pixar, over at uh, Disney, uh, Disney Movies Anywhere, uh, one of the producers uh, had a child with a visual impairment, and he wanted to make sure she was able to enjoy the movies. So from now on, all the Disney movies, Blu-rays, uh, the theaters, you press a button on a remote and they will audio describe what's happening. They'll tell you who's in the room, what they look like, what, what the tables are like. It, it's phenomenal. And uh, we've got a little, uh, little clip of these producers talking. You might enjoy this. Jonas Rivera, I'm a producer here. And I'm Paul Sackhoff, in post-production here at Pixar. We are uh, we're super excited to be part of this panel. We're sorry that we couldn't be there, but yeah. we're, we're, we're thrilled with the people that are here with us. Yeah, it's a great group of folks, uh, champions of accessibility. We're proud to be among them and, and proud to be part of this, even if it's uh, on camera. It means a lot to us. So we, uh, we at Pixar are all about quality. Quality, quality, quality. Um, and Honestly, it was when you and I worked together back on Up yeah. that we sort of really started to focus on the um, audio description track that is released theatrically with films um, and sort of learned things about it and, and the fact that it wasn't on DVD back in the day that sort of got us talking and wanting to do things differently. Yeah, I, I actually learned, learned things about it, learned about it. I didn't even know Up was the first film I produced. And Paul was the post supervisor on that film, and um, it was something I learned about in the early days of that picture. Because, um, well, to just zoom back out, uh, my daughter became a, I became a father on that film, and, and my daughter Elsa uh, was born, and um, she was born with uh, ocular albinism and, and nystagmus. And my wife and I sort of shocked into this world of of a potential. Uh, visual problem with our daughter, uh, you know, sent us on this long emotional journey where we interface with many people here that, that we adore, and um, and we were sort of kind of getting used to the fact that we, we may have a daughter that has low vision or no vision. Uh, she's now 10 and has vision, but still is impaired, and this set me off on this uh, little bit of a personal bend. We were right after the news, in fact, in this room, uh, right after we got that news, we didn't know if... Uh, you know how severe our case was. We were sitting in this room at a screening of, of one of our films, and I sat in these seats. And everybody I work with, the directors, the art directors, the animators, you know, everybody. When the screening was over and the lights came up, we always sit as we do and talk about what we saw. And everybody, I'd never heard this before through this uh, lens of my life. Was did you see this? Look at. Did you notice that? Did you see the colors in this? Did you? And I. And that's kind of when I had my breakdown a little bit because I thought. Oh my gosh! I, I may have a daughter that doesn't see what I do. You know what I what I contribute to here. And there was something really visceral, as you, probably many of you know, about that moment when I heard about the audio description process. And when Paul Saki came, we dug in with great rigor on that. And to your point earlier, we're all about quality. Everything here is about story. So we had this thought, like, well, if that's part of our storytelling, we should wrap our arms around that and own it and and, and make it as good as it can be. Right? Right. right. That narration track's important. It is. How, we, how can we better that? So we, we come into that, and we're proud of that, and it was, um, it was just something personal, but also made sense in the world when we started doing focus groups. Because Paul got the great idea to bring people up where we do our post production at Skywalker Ranch, and we brought members of the blind community, low vision community, from a lot of great groups around here. And we just filled the room with people that could then watch the films with the dialogue and give us notes, give us notes on the way it was written. Was it too preachy? Was it too over-descriptive? Was it... Is, is this what people that have no vision want to hear? How do they want to hear it? And and we got aggregate a lot of those notes. 
sonically, how should it be mixed? Is there anything different? We just tried to, I don't do anything and everything. Push that further to make it as, as good as it can be. And right. it, it, like you said, it was everything from the narrator's voice and the way that they were performing it to the actual dialogue that we were squeezing in in between the, yeah. all the, the feature dialogue. But there was that kid, there was one kid, I still remember, you can picture her face, she was like a 14-year-old kid, and I think she was completely blind, I don't think she had any vision, and yes. we were screening Wally, our film, to, to observe how that audience would react so that we could then inform what we've gone up. And uh, I'll never forget, she said, oh, Wally, she said, when we told her, she said, I've seen this movie twice, I love this movie, and I just like fell in love with her, like, oh my gosh, like, our job, this, is, this isn't this is just some exercise, it's something we have to make great, because these people see these movies. Make no mistake. So I brought that back. We brought that back to the executives and John Lasseter and Ed Catmull here. And so we want to champion this and, and do it right. And, and hopefully we've made progress, progress there because we, we really do pay attention to it. It's important to us. Uh, and that journey, starting on up, at least for me, has led us through a lot of experiments and, and ways and, and I think culminated in this partnership with DMA, right. would you say? Yeah, yeah. So There's actually, no movies anywhere. These yeah. are the folks that really have taken it to the next step. Right. So what we're really here to talk to you a little bit about is a new feature on DMA, Disney Movies Anywhere. Um, partnering with the team at Disney, they've created an app that will sync the narration track in your phone, your iOS device, to the feature that's playing either in a movie theater or on your home television, whether it be a DVD, a Blu-ray, Netflix, Amazon, um, or off of the DMA app itself. And the point of it, we hope, is that it's free and that allows everybody, everybody in the world, no matter what level of vision you have, to experience the films the way anyone with vision would. That's that's the hope, and and that you can do that anywhere. Well, yeah, right, right, exactly. Do it here Maybe in a funny way, right. And, sort of uh, accessibility anywhere is sort of our tag name for a feature. So we're very proud that we were at least some small part of that, and we we hope that it makes an impact. And we really wish we were there and not at Pixar, but we have a lot of work to do. There's a lot of movies going on. And uh, we really want to thank you for this opportunity to speak speak about it. And uh, we, we, uh, we hope we continue to have opportunities to, to work on this. Thanks for your time. Thank you. That's just, it's amazing, Gene, what, what they can do. And I know that audio description has been out for quite a while, and, you know, a lot of movies have it today. In fact, my friend that I met at uh, the last Access U, Tommy Edison, um, he, he's a movie critic, and he's, he's a blind movie critic that, that uh, critiques movies just based on what he listens to. And he critiques Whoa. them. He's on YouTube. He's definitely a friend of the Gene and Dave show, so check him out. Look up Tommy Edison on YouTube and see what it's like to be a blind person that critiques uh, movies. Well, I'll definitely have to check him out, Dave. But you know, it didn't end there. They had a gentleman from an organization called Be My Eyes. And what they do, they, they have volunteers from all over the world. and. If you have a visual impairment, you're blind, you uh, uh, go on the internet, you access their program, and within 30 seconds, they will connect you with someone. Now, what you do then is you take your smartphone and you point it, uh, let's say you're in your kitchen, you want to bake something. You point your phone at the ingredients you've got in your kitchen. The person at the other end of the line will describe to you... Uh, well, the, the flowers over on your left, the, the measuring spoons are on your right. And um, so this is way cool, too. If you've, you want to go to your kid's baseball game and you're blind, they'll, they'll tell you, well, it's you know two men on base, the batter's up, and uh, it's pop fly. They'll describe everything. So, How did we exist without technology, Gene? <laughs> I'm beginning to wonder. It was just so amazing. So... Uh, yeah, Be My Eyes was another group we enjoyed. But wait, there's more. No way. Yes. More still? Um, our, our good friend Ed, Ed Gray, from uh, Avid. Um, I know you're a, you're a com computer nerd, so you've, <laughs> you've used Avid before. Let's say you're blind and you want to edit music. You go to 
avid.com, A-V-I-D. And from there, you could download something called Pro Tools. Get it for free. Then you put that in your Apple in the, the um, they have a, a, a voice option in the Apple. Mm -hmm. You put it in there and uh, it'll describe to you where uh, the software so that even if you're totally blind, you can edit your own music. Wow. And I, I think we have a, a little clip of Ed telling us about that. He's going to tell us how to get it. Hello, this is Ed Ray from Avid Technology, the people that bring you Pro Tools. And my email address is ed.gray, G-R-A-Y, at avid.com. And Ed, to get Pro Tools, we go to the Avid website. That yes, you procure Pro Tools first, the free version of Pro Tools. You go to avid.com, you download it. And then if you want to use it uh, with Mac VoiceOver, uh, that's something that comes with the Mac OS, and so you go to System Preferences, select the Accessibility System Preferences, and within that you enable VoiceOver, and you should be cooking with gas. Dave, there was another presenter there that um, actually I think we saw last year, but, but we really want to uh, repeat this because this, this was pretty amazing. Um, there's a woman who runs an organization called Vocal ID. Now, there's something called augmentative communication devices. Yes, I think we have all heard <laughs> them before. Exactly. And if you're a little kid, you don't want to sound like that. You don't want your voice <laughs> to be like this. I would like a cookie, please. <sighs> Absolutely. So this woman that started this organization, Vocal Aid, what she does is um, she'll get little kids to read all these words, put them in a database, and then she'll have the child with a disability um, speak into a mic. Now, don't expect the um, child to be real fluent or easy to understand, but even if they're making grunting noises, mm -hmm. it's, it's their noise, it's their voice. So then, what she does is she matches these, the sound of the child with this database of, of children that, that have already uh, recorded a bunch of sounds. And she creates a new, um, a new voice for the kid with the augmentative communication device. Right. And I think we've even got a clip of that. We do. We've got another one that we've stolen. Yes. <laughs> so anyway. Um, thank you for letting us steal your clip and just, it's awesome. What we yeah. saw at the South by Southwest trade show and, and talking to you was great, but this clip, oh man, it just, it really says it all, everything that Gene just said, so he, spoiler alert, but anyway, don't turn the TV yet. You've got to watch this clip because this is an amazing story.
<laughs> Gene, maybe so we need to get you an augmentative ca communication device, and we could put my name on it. You, you were just saying a little bit ago how you wished your voice was like mine, so I could be the voice of Gene Rogers. Well, you've got such a, a nice, deep voice, Dave, and it's easy for people to understand, but I'm always mumbling and... Um, yeah, maybe I need voice lessons. I don't know. There we go. Well, we'll see what we can do. But just amazing technology. Very amazing. And if you want to see the video on YouTube, well, I mean, you can see it on our show, but if you want to see it on YouTube, it's called What Happens When You Give Your Sister a Voice. <laughs> now, we were running all over the convention center, um, the, the Marriott, uh, the Long Center, and we happened to find some folks from Michigan State showing some, I guess you'd call it tactile um, feedback programs. Yeah, yeah. And you talked with them. What, what were they saying? They just, they have an amazing new tool that allows you to draw um, through this screen type feature. So the harder you press, the more vibrant the color gets. You can change the colors just by pressing harder or softer, moving your hand around. Um, just an amazing tool. The inventor of it has a daughter with autism. and He wanted to um, be able to help her color and draw, but her, her pressure and sensitivity of how she pushed using regular crayons just didn't really work for her. It, it didn't register. So he created this tool that hooks into the computer with this mesh top, very similar to that that you would find on a trampoline. But the harder you pressed in on it, the deeper and richer the colors got. So um, take a look at this clip. We apologize for the sound. It's not that great. But uh, just being able to watch it and see th this amazing new tool developed at Michigan State is really cool. Okay, so we're hanging out with Michigan State here at South by Southwest, and they have this awesome canvas stretched over with a backlit light, and, and she's coloring. You want to tell us more about what this technology is and what it's used for? Sure. Yeah. Um, so the technology is designed for children with autism, and it basically makes the experience of coloring into a more tactile experience. So in particular, children with autism can often have issues with um, reading sensory stimuli, particularly tactile stimuli, okay. um, and fine motor control. So the idea here is we essentially help them compensate for that. So the experience of on the textile is very tactile. It gives you uh, responsiveness in terms of the more you push, the more reaction you get in the textile. Okay. And then it gives you this visual update where, depending on the amount of pressure that's applied, you're coloring with a different color. You're using a different. Then it looks like the backdrop there makes it so you can only color in the lines. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great. I need that. And, you know, it's it's always about making um, every, everything a successful, positive experience. Yeah, so that's great. Having the graphics as opposed to a big blank page, um, you know, just makes it more attractive. <laughs> So you can see, even though the color is blue, depending on how much pressure she applies, it goes from blue to purple. Okay. So the idea is, you know, they can ask the child to do a certain task of try and focus on having a little bit more control in the amount of pressure that they're using by saying, okay, just color at the depth of orange, you know, which is only pushing a certain degree. Yeah color everything at the depth of yellow, which is pushing even harder. Um, it's kind of the, the idea is generated from my research, which is in textiles, and the fact that I have a daughter who's six years old who has autism. Yeah, that she loves this, and, right? Yeah, and she has all of these issues. Is she here today? Uh, no, no, Michigan. Michigan. Ann Arbor. Oh, okay. 
so she has all these issues of limited fine motor control. She's very clumsy, so she has kind of low muscle tone. Um, so she's often not using the right amount of pressure to do certain activities, pick things up, push things in. Um, so the idea here is, you know, hopefully we can give her a tool which um, sort of learn this correlation between amount of movement and application of pressure. That's awesome. That looks like a lot of fun. So that was a really cool tool, and it, uh, it was amazing. Once again, I apologize for the sound, but we had sound difficulties, didn't we? Okay. While we were at South by Southwest. On the trade room floor, we start to record Michigan State and realize that the batteries are dead. Yeah, boy, what a bummer that is. One of us should have known better and brought extra batteries. Yes, and you know how hard it is just to find batteries oh, at yeah. downtown during South by Southwest? First of all, just navigating is difficult because there's so many people. Um, it is it is an amazing time, but a lot of times in a wheelchair, it's hard to get through some of the crowds. And you went looking for me. I, I, you went off to get batteries, and like an hour later, I was saying, where is Jeannie? Because I couldn't find you anywhere. I figured you'd be back. And, and you know, as it is, there's a lot of people and a lot of things going on. So I couldn't find you. And I decided, why not record me trying to find you? So here we go. Enjoy. Let's all go together and try to find Gene on the trade show floor at the convention center. Enjoy. I just don't always, I don't understand why at South by Southwest, I never can find Gene. I mean, I know he's got to be around here somewhere. All these crowds of people. Have you seen Gene? I don't know Gene. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Well. He hasn't seen him either. Wow. Imagine that. Look who I found hanging out at the nobility booth. Okay. I knew I'd find you. You, you, you sure did. And it's always at nobility's booth. Right, right you are, Dave. <laughs> Every year, we look forward to seeing the folks at Nobility. <laughs> and um, what they do is they make the web accessible for people with disabilities. Uh, they, they make it so you can enhance your web page. It's easier for people with low vision to see. They make it so that if... Um, person's blind, they can use a screen reader to read all the code seamlessly. Um, it's an amazing organization, and we know if one of us gets lost, meet up at Nobility. Because <laughs> we'll both eventually be there at some point in time, and they had really cool, they had new swag this year. I was so excited. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah I got a pen that writes in four different colors, um, um, and a couple new masks, superhero masks. Yeah. Those uh, superheroes are um, access heroes, right? They are. Yeah. They're the access yeah. heroes. Yeah. So that you yeah. too can be a hero if your website is accessible. Now, in addition to having a booth at South by Southwest, every year Nobility puts on the Dewey Awards. Uh, Mr. Dewey was the founder of South by Southwest and uh, unfortunately passed away a few years ago, but uh, every year Nobility will present awards to people who use technology uh, in a community service. So um, we, we, Dave and I go to that every year. Here's a picture of Sharon Rush. We're all looking at her and <laughs> of course here's some other folks, uh, Dennis Burrell and there's uh, Jessica with her arm around me. and. Uh, we, we, we had a great time there, and it's, it's always good to see people who start something, and they're, they're just making lives easier, and uh, so we love the Dewey Awards.
That's right. Congratulations to not only the winners, but also the nominees. Because mm. it's, it's all of us, all of you, that are changing the world for the better. Now, it doesn't end there, Dave. More? There's more. We went to South by Create over at the Long Center. Wow. That's where we met the R2-D2, <laughs> Annabelle. Uh, we met all sorts of folks that are building things, making unique things um, it, for people in general, but specifically, robots. yeah, yeah, robots. In fact, you interviewed R2-D2. I did. I got a chance to. It's probably, Gene, honestly, the highlight of South by Southwest for me was being able to meet R2-D2. And I swear it was like he came right off of the movie screen and landed here in Austin, Texas. <laughs> Check out this R2-D2. He is awesome. So here we are, South by Southwest 2016, and uh, I found I found a friend of mine. This is R2-D2, the droid. Hello, R2. So R2, um, can you tell me what you think about the accessibility here at uh, South by Southwest? Okay, well, if my R2-D2 droid speak is good, he says it's pretty good. He's been able to get around. Lots of ramps on the sidewalk. So thanks for being on the Gene and Dave show, R2. What is your favorite TV show? Oh, yeah, we want to know. What is your favorite TV show? <laughs> I heard him. He just said the Dave and Gene show. Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't even notice the little thumbs up thing that he gave me when I was yeah. asking about accessibility and he gave the thumbs up. That was very, very cool. Yeah, now R2-D2 seemed to, seemed to do fine with the accessibility, but we found a few issues. Uh, for example, there was a one program we went to, they had a nice ramp going up to this um, exhibition, but you get around the back there and there's a three inch lip to get inside. So that wasn't working for us. Uh, we saw another presentation with um, uh, Zach Anner, who's a, a wheelchair user, and they didn't have a ramp for Zach, so somebody carried him up uh, to sit him at the table there. But these, uh, I mean, they get better every year. Uh, every year, though, the access buttons at the convention center are covered up with tape and posters. Yeah, and you can't even find them. I just, right. I'd like to make a shout out to folks. You know, if you're putting up posters, leave the access buttons open so that people can still use them, find them, uh, be able to see that they're there. We know that they're there because we've, been, yeah. we've been to the Austin Convention Center over and over again and love that facility. It is very accessible. We'd love to be able to push those buttons. Mm -hmm. But if they're covered up with your poster, can't find them. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a bummer. But um, other than that, uh, it was the access was pretty good. Um, yeah, and it, contrary to popular belief, we were still able to use the sidewalks. Yeah. Even though there were signs that told us <laughs> Not yeah. to drive here. <laughs> no motorized vehicles on the sidewalk. But you know what? We did it anyway. I don't That's recommend right. breaking the law, but in this case, we did it. <laughs> I remember you and I went to get some free vodka, and I almost flipped over backwards. You did. We were, we were trying to get into the tents, and we were following the line of people where they were going, and it was up this huge hill. But the minute you almost flipped over... 
because you went back and your wheelie bars yeah. went into the grass, which was soft because it had been raining. Um, it seemed to alert the attention of a few people. <laughs> and before we knew it, there was this nice, nice lady coming around the corner saying, please, let me show you in. Let me show you to the front of the line. What would you like to drink? Boy, that was sweet. What service? It huh? was. It was. That it was. was it was great. You almost had to break your neck again, but uh, we got up to the front of the line and got us some mm. deep Eddie vodka. Well, what do we yeah. have to do to get those guys as sponsors? <laughs> right. Hey, let's give them a call. I'll do that tomorrow. It was good stuff. Thank you very much. You know, it's easier to get vodka, free vodka, free beer and food than it is to get water at it South is. By. There was not water yeah. anywhere around. But but it was a good time. We had a, we had a great time. Um, let's see, we had, uh, there were other robots in addition to R2-D2. Uh, we mentioned Annabelle, and Annabelle had something to say about body form. Let's see what she says. Here's Annabelle. Hi, Annabelle. My name's Dave from the Gene and Dave Show. The starring actress for Godfart <laughs> and our profit theater arts organization. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear it. I'm well with my hearing today. I'm somewhat lobotomizing here in Austin because, <laughs> well, I'm here in Austin for them to behave differently, but some are limited by their physical form. Yeah, story of our lives, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Annabelle. All right, so here's Annabelle. She's on the Gene and Dave Show. Pretty dress, Annabelle. We'll see you next time. Okay. That's Annabelle. Yeah. But, <laughs> I don't know. As cool as R2-D2. What was but, missed, yeah. though, in that clip is I, I wish the cameraman that we had would have panned down because the bottom portion of Annabelle, her legs, well, she didn't really have legs. They were. It was actually a motorized wheelchair. The whole oh. bottom portion, I don't know if you noticed that. I did not but notice it, what, it. But the whole bottom was a permobile wheelchair oh. um, with a mannequin torso sitting on top of it. So that's how Annabelle was getting around. And I don't know who was controlling her, but she ran into me like six times mm. uh, trying to talk to me. I, she, I guess she didn't see my wheelchair. Or she was just really friendly with my wheelchair. She was coming on to you, Dave. Maybe. I think that's what it Could was. be. Good old Annabelle. Yeah. But uh, I, I ran in, or found a huge robot down there, and uh, I had a uh, camera mounted to my wheelchair. There was a professional cameraman, saw me raise my chair so I could get a better view with this camera, and he gave me the thumbs up. And, uh, <laughs> so we, we do a lot of our own filming. We have a good time. And you were, uh, I mean, it, we were there for Interactive Week. Absolutely. And you were on a mat by uh, Lumo, Lumo Watch, I think, Lumo Interactive, with the fish. And you're rolling around on all these fish. Uh-huh. And... Uh, they were dodging my wheels, trying yeah. to get run over. I'm thinking a cat would go nuts for something like yeah, that. Yeah, and it was the closest thing I'd ever been to walking on water. <laughs> so there, there's... All kinds of interactive stuff there, folks, and uh, almost sensory overload. Uh, but um, we we definitely had a good time. Now, speaking of overload, um, our buddy AJ was telling us about something called EpiWatch. Now, for people that have seizures, you can wear this watch, and when, when you feel like you're going to start to have a seizure, you press a button, It'll download all this information to the watch. Um, it's actually an Apple Watch. It's a simple oh. Apple Watch with the with the Epi Watch application on it, with the app on it, that oh. uses all the new health technologies that are embedded into the Apple Watch. They're yeah. really taking on the all the capabilities of the Apple Watch that that watches your blood pressure and your health and. Um, everything about you, but they've really streamlined it for people that suffer from seizures and they built an app for, for those people. 
Well, you know what, Gene? Let's just watch the clip. Let's do. Um, so what you have here is the seizure tracking. So you can see a history of the seizures. Um, I have a, a few seizures I've tracked already uh, in my history, and then one that just recently was tracked. You can see I have two of them today. And whoops, two of them today. And then I just have to, I can, I still have to log what type of seizure it was. So I can do that. Um, and it asks me information about the seizure itself. And then the other thing I would show is your medication tracking. Uh, so here we can set up medications and follow the medications that you take every day, uh, whether you take them or not. Uh, if you didn't take them, uh, it would be considered part of the data you need to know about your study. And then I can show if you'd like the watch. So you kind of have to come at it from the top because it'll time out. Uh, so here I have the custom complication. Track that. I can track a seizure. And then it does a countdown. It's assuming at this point you're actually having a seizure. And now I have a strong haptic vibration on my wrist. This is asking if I'm alert. Uh, and it will just repeat until I actually uh, return from my seizure. And now it's assessing my uh, cognitive skill to see how, uh, how much I've returned from the seizure event. And I have to try to remember the pattern. And now it's gathering heart rate data for 10 minutes. <laughs> cool stuff. You know, Dave, uh, we, we had a lot of firsts on the Gene and Dave show. Now we, we've got our first um, stalker. Yeah. Brittany. Um, Brittany has a website called Able Thrive. Uh, her father was uh, spinal cord injured, and they, they had to learn from scratch what they could do to help him out, yeah. how to do things. And Brittany decided, hey, why don't we share this information with other people around the world? And so they set up a web page with videos from other folks that. Uh, with spinal cord injuries, showing how they do stuff. Yeah, and she was at South by Southwest too, trying to find out anything that was disability related. So I think everything that we went to, she was there. It seemed like uh, we were stalking her, she was yeah. stalking us, but Brittany's awesome. She's really, she really, really cool, and we appreciate her meeting with us. And every time we saw her, she would talk about what she learned and compared it to what we learned. Um, I wish we could have her on the show, but she's lives too far away but yeah she's in Pennsylvania you can uh, check out her website that she created Able Thrive and please tell them that you saw it on the Gene and Dave show and enter in your own information your own right. experiences because it's definitely a community based thing for people with disabilities to share your story and get it out there great website check it out so we're here at uh, MedTech Expo at the JW Marriott and uh, Brittany tracked us down. Brittany, it's such a pleasure to see you. Tell us about Able Thrive. Uh, we understand you have a personal connection to that, and you've got a great website. Well, thanks. Uh, so uh, my dad was paralyzed in a car accident when I was 12, and um, it was it's tough, but we were extremely lucky because we were connected to a really great spinal cord injury hospital, which gave us access to support mentors and uh, an idea very early that my dad was going to be able to live a happy and fulfilling life and um, that was normal then my dad went on to now lives independently he's an engineer he drives does a lot of things that people don't realize people can do with a disability and it was not until I was in college that I realized um, that we were the minority of people in our situation and that many people still aren't aware that that's possible um, but I also realized that we weren't a special case and that it should be easier for people to find that information and I didn't like the idea that my entire existence and the way I my whole family's life would be determined by luck so we wanted to remove the luck from the equation for living well with a disability so started AbleThrive.com and we launched about seven months ago and we curate um, articles and videos about living well with a disability from a network of blogs organizations companies and hospitals to make sure that the good work and the information that they're sharing um, 
um, benefits everyone who could benefit from it, not just those already in their local network or their, you know, online network. And if people have videos they think would be helpful to the uh, spinal cord injured population, they can contact you to, to share a video and you could possibly put that on your site? And then if it's just an individual who maybe has a story that was impactful or wanted to share or is willing to share, then we have a content team that'll take people's experiences or videos and then we can turn them into a post. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Brittany. Now, as you said, we, there were times it seemed like we were stalking Brittany, Brittany was stalking us. Well, I caught up with Brittany when she was talking with a gentleman named Ian. Now, Ian... Uh, broke his neck when he went diving into shallow water. He's now a uh, high-level quadriplegic, but he's working with some folks that are trying to help him use what muscles he has. They put something in his head connected to his brain so he could just think about opening his hand and he's got this device on his hand It'll cause the muscles to open, wow. to close. Yeah, it's um, it's like Star Trek. So, uh, so we wanted to give a shout out to Ian. Thanks, Ian, for uh, for talking with us. And I asked him what his favorite show is. And what did he tell you? Well, let's take a look. What's your favorite TV show? Favorite TV show is the Dean and Dave show. Mine too. Yeah, every, everyone has <laughs> the course. same answer, yeah. Yeah, I like the Gene and Dave show. Um, then we went to yet another uh, program. Still another. What a packed South by Southwest this year. It's called Tech Inclusion. And they were talking about getting people with disabilities um, included in the workforce. And one of the gentlemen there, Steve... Gungarik is uh, the co-founder of Nobility and the first board chairman. Now, Steve was uh, chatting with us um, about including more people with disabilities in the workforce. Mm -hmm. And then workforce. So we have a we have a, a program called Access Works that allows uh, companies, large and small to put their software or websites to test uh, so that they can be uh, made better simply through being more uh, universally designed. And we, it's also a marketplace for men and women to apply if they have some form of disability that want to be employed and be testers. And so you can apply and become a tester and get paid doing that work, um, making corporate websites uh, better. So that's among the things that we're trying to do for, for the benefit of all of us. But we also talked to him about helping us out with a maker fair. And um, Steve was pretty enthusiastic about it. He was, which sounds great. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get him involved. And uh, you, can, you can look for our um, maker fair, I don't know when, but we really want to get people involved in this. and. Uh, uh, right now, we're waiting for Tikum Olam Makers, or TAM for short, um, out of Israel to uh, give us the green light on getting started on this. But uh, it's going to be such a, an exciting program. And a special big thanks to the people at South by Southwest who graciously welcome us every year um, as press so that we can come in and film and bring to you uh, this show. It definitely wouldn't be possible without them letting us in and letting us come with our cameras. We have to get through and do a lot of credentials and things to be able to film. Uh, we really appreciate the support of all the South by Southwest media staff who help us get started, get in the door, and be able to film things that we can, we can bring to you if you can't attend South by Southwest. Yeah, Dave, this is for people all over the world. Austin is the epicenter for uh, I interactive and, and digital uh, new media and, and devices and such. So uh, 
Whereas it used to be we would have to look for something that would be helpful for people with disabilities. It's all over the place now. Yeah. An amazing event for everyone involved. Everything from when mostly we've just talked about what we saw at Interactive. But there is a whole other piece, the film, the music. Mm -hmm. um, simply amazing that we didn't even we didn't even get to touch on because yeah. we were so busy with interactive but there were there were even films that featured people with disabilities there's music that have disability uh, disabled artists with them um, I seem to recall you were in a movie last year that's right yeah, South by I was. Southwest. and this year another buddy of mine that uses a chair um, is in a show that's coming on uh, HBO soon um, wow. and it premiered at South by Southwest so just fantastic stuff going on. I definitely recommend if you have never been to a South by Southwest that you get here, that you go. If you're in Austin, get yourself some tickets um, or even volunteer. You can, you can yeah, volunteer true. to help out and be able to uh, earn badges if you can't afford them. So definitely South by Southwest people work with you. Um, it's a great so program. So people can come up to the volunteers and say, where's Gene? Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, just like I did. <laughs> just like you but did. But you yeah. might get the same answer I did. Oh, I don't know, Gene. <laughs> you know, Dave, whenever you go to South by Southwest, you can get plenty of swag. That's stuff we all get. <laughs> well, this year they were giving out these 3D glasses. Is this what you brought for me that this you said in front of me here? This is for you, buddy. Okay, let's see. So what you do is you open up these glasses and you stick your phone in it. You connect to this website and you, you can see all this 3D stuff. Now, if you folks have ever used an Oculus or other 3D type hardware, you know it's really awesome. But they're giving out free 3D glasses. So uh, it'll, it'll really blow your mind. And, and there's some people with certain types of disabilities that can appreciate that, being able to travel with this thing. Whoa! Gee! <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, I didn't know there was pictures of you out there like this. <laughs> Woo! We're going to have to edit that one day. i got to put that down. I don't want to look at that anymore. Ooh. <laughs> Man, that is something in 3D. It really is. Oh, my gosh. So we'll see you next year at South by Southwest and this year on the Gene and Dave Show at www.thegeneanddaveshow.com and Austin Public, Channel 16. <laughs> That's right. Special shout-out and thank you to Austin Public. To Doug and all the crew. Yeah, the media of Austin is definitely here. Um, we really appreciate all their help in being able to film and and come and work in a studio. That's right. If people want to send donations to the Gene and Dave show so we can keep filming, well, go to our webpage and you'll find a, a, a little thing to click on there in the corner. Keep us rolling in the upper right-hand corner. Definitely exactly. help keep us rolling. And we love to hear from you, too. Whether it's out on the street, uh, I bumped into several people that ask me, are you Gene? And I usually say, no, ask me, I'm are Dave. You Dave. <laughs> That's right, but uh, it, it's still, it's really awesome to be able to meet people out on the street that have seen the show. Um, we love to hear your feedback. Love to hear what you liked. Uh, we even love to hear what you didn't like so that we can make this show better. Exactly. It's, after all, it is for you because mm -hmm. you're watching it right now. And we wanna make the show the best that we can and, and keep you entertained. So if you have anything, any ideas, please feel free to email Gene at thegeneanddaveshow.com or Dave at thegeneanddaveshow.com. We do read our emails and quite often we respond and reply. And if you've got a great idea and even want to come on the show, we've had people on the show before. That's right. So please right. email us and let us know what you think. Until next show, folks. So long. Um, Bye now. <laughs> yeah.